This is the Manga Xanadu Manga Dome Podcast. I am your host, Lori Henderson. Join me on this journey into the world of manga, where a river of reviews flow through caverns of commentary down into the latest news. Welcome to the Manga Dome. Episode 16, Manga at San Diego Comic Con. The San Diego Comic Con, which is usually referred to as just Comic Con or STCC, was this last weekend, July 17th to the 21st. It is not just the big convention on the West Coast, it is the biggest gathering of fans in the U.S. It tops off at 140,000 people a day, and that is only because that is the max capacity of the San Diego Convention Center. This last year, four-day tickets sold out in about 10 minutes. So with so much attention directed at this event, but through fans and press, you'd think manga publishers would save their most exciting announcements for the weekend. Apparently not so much. SDCC announcements started a few days before the con, with Seven Seas announcing two new licenses. Girls in Panzer is an action comedy that is set in a parallel world where the art of tank combat is a traditional Japanese martial art for girls. The story follows Miho who has just transferred to Ori Girls Academy and is assigned to the school team to compete in the Nationals. It has an anime as well, though it's hard to say if the manga is based on the anime or vice versa since they were developed at the same time. I'm not sure how I feel about this title. It sounds really odd, but I actually get a rather con vibe from it just with tanks instead of music. I really didn't enjoy con. I guess I'll just have to wait and see. It will be out sometime in 2014. The second series is Arpeggio of Blue Steel. It is the early 21st century. Man has lost a lot of land to global warming and rising seas. At the same time, the mysterious Fleet of Fog, a fleet of sentient ships, appear and defeat the world's naval forces blockading the oceans. Seventeen years later, the Japanese have created the Blue Steel Fleet, led by a former student of the National Marine Academy and with a fleet of fog submarine that defected, they are the only crew capable of traversing the oceans and getting the plans for a powerful weapon to the United States, the only country capable of mass producing it and finally stopping the fleet of fog. This sounds like a great title. It's got an interesting premise with a mystery and plenty of action. The environmental message I can do without, but everything else sounds interesting. This is getting a must-buy. The series will also be out sometime in 2014. Their third title was Strike Witches, which was previously announced on Memorial Day after Fanime, and they also announced a deal with Comixology to make their titles available there. Seven Seas is right up there with DMP about getting their titles out digitally. Seven Seas also seems to have learned the licensed manga of anime coming out soon lesson. Girls in Panzer had its anime streamed last fall, and Arpeggio of Blue Steel has an anime coming out this next season. At the con itself, the first manga panel was from Viz Media, which was rather devoid of manga. They hyped titles already announced at the beginning of the year and their re-release announcements from Anime Expo. The only new licenses were for their sci-fi novel imprint, Haikasoru. They will release a graphic novel adaptation of their novel, All You Need Is Kill, which is also being remade by Hollywood as Edge of Tomorrow. They also announced a new translation of Battle Royale. What is that? The third or fourth? edition translation of the novel, and Battle Royale Slam, a collection of essays. I think Viz is going to get the crown for King of Re-Releasing to Death. First Dragon Ball, and now Battle Royale. What's next? Kodansha Comics really surprised me. They made some new license announcements at Anime Expo, and then came to SDCC with even more. They have four new titles and one, we're not rescuing any more Delray titles, except we are. My Little Monster is a shoujo series that follows the budding relationship of Shizuku Mizutani and Haru Yoshida. They meet one day when Shizuku has to take some printouts to Haru's home after he has missed several days at school. After meeting, Haru considers Shizuku to be his friend and starts hanging out with her. This title has appeared many times on Kodansha's Tumblr as a license request, so it's nice to see Kodansha actually listening. The series is currently 11 volumes and still ongoing. I wasn't sure about the series after reading the initial description, but it might be interesting. I'll give it a wait and see. Say I Love You is another shoujo with a protagonist with no friends or interest in a boyfriend. Mei Tachibana is a 16-year-old and because of a childhood incident hasn't tried to make any friends or find a boyfriend. After a misunderstanding with the popular Yamato Kurosawa, he takes a liking to her and starts working to break down her walls for not just a friendship, but also a relationship. 
This series is also ongoing and is currently at 10 volumes. It also has some potential, so I'll give it a wait and see as well. Part of the popularity of these two titles is probably due to both of them having had animes released last fall. Kodansha has jumped on the anime adaptation bandwagon too. Kodansha's third title is Monster Soul by Hiro Mashima, the creator of Rave Master and Fairy Tale. Monster Soul is a two-volume series about the Black Heirs, the strongest group of monsters in the land of Elfinland in the battle between humans and monsters. I really liked Fairy Tale and Monster Hunter Urage, so I have high hopes for this title as well. And at two volumes, it's not a big investment. It gets a must-buy. Not too surprising is their license of Holic Ray by Clamp, which continues the supernatural antics of Watanuki and Yuko in their wish-granting shop. The series began serialization in Japan in March of this year, so there won't be any volumes out anytime soon, but Clamp fans won't have to wonder or worry about who or if will be releasing this series. I wasn't overly impressed with the original Holic series, so I probably won't be checking this one out anytime soon either, so it gets a wait and see. In a previous podcast, I talked about Kodansha's little rant about people asking them about licensed rescuing titles from Del Rey. They have said repeatedly that they are not rescuing any previously published Del Rey titles at this time. And then they announced that they are releasing Holic and Subasa Reservoir Chronicle in Omnibus. Uh, guys? Holic and Subasa were the only titles Del Rey kept after Kodansha started their own company in the U.S.? So much for not rescuing any more Del Rey titles. Please don't blatantly lie to fans. Go ahead and say you won't be picking up any individual titles, but not make blanket statements that are obviously not true. The manga is a lie. Yen Press had a booth and panel scheduled, but the panel was canceled. No reason was ever given why, so no news from them. Every year, the Eisner Awards, the Academy Awards of Comics, is held at SDCC. While manga can be nominated in any of the categories, it has usually only ever had a chance in the Best U.S. Edition of International Material Asia. I discussed the nominees in a previous episode, and the winner was 20th Century Boys by Naoki Urasawa. This is Urasawa's second Eisner in the same category. It previously won in 2011. I must be missing something, because I really wasn't all that impressed with 20th Century Boys, and certainly not the end. I would have preferred to see Barbara or Nanomba win, or even Therme Rome, but being a comedy manga probably gave it even less of a chance. Also a little disappointing to me was that Yen Press's Kitty and Dino didn't win the best publication for early readers. I love that book. There were also several panels that were of interest to manga fans. The perennial favorite is the Best and Worst Manga Panel, where a group of well-known commentators in the manga community talk about their best and worst titles, as well as underrated and most anticipated. I was heartened to hear two titles I didn't like, Bleach and Demon Love Spell, also appeared on others' worst lists. I also wholeheartedly agree with Silver Spoon as a most wanted, and will pick up anything with cats, so the mention of Go Go Date Neko De Aru, but Go Go is a cat, has me intrigued. You can listen to the full audio of the panel at thecomicbooks.com. Check the show notes for the full link. There was also a surprise license announcement at the Beyond the Valley of Tezuka, manga legends you don't know but should know. Doraemon, a popular kids manga, will be coming out digitally in full color on the Amazon Kindle in the fall of this year. The title is being released as a joint venture between Fujiko F. Fujio Productions and Voyager Japan, with translations by Alt Japan. Doraemon is the story of a cat robot from the 22nd century who travels back in time to save Nobita Nobi, a typical young boy from a terrible fate. Using his many gadgets from the future and his time traveling abilities, Doraemon and Nobita go on lots of fantastic adventures. Fans of kids' manga have been asking for this series for years, and it's nice to see it finally coming out. Kids will probably love it, too. I was really expecting more from SDCC, but it seems publishers were making announcements early in the year and not saving anything big or exciting for the con. Viz Media's announcements certainly weren't out of place for the show. Sci-fi has always been a big part of Comic-Con, but at least one license announcement would have been nice. Like maybe Silver Spoon? I'm also disappointed by Yen Press's cancellation. 
as I'm sure people at the show were as well, unless they were just going to repeat the same announcements from earlier in the year. Then it's okay to cancel. Once again, Kodansha wins the con for having something new and exciting along with all of their older announcements. I guess we'll have to wait and see what Otakon brings, which is coming up in two weeks. Thank you for listening to the Manga Xanadu Manga Dome podcast. You can find links to the stories and books discussed here in the show notes at manga.jdragononline.com. You can email me with any questions at xanadu at jdragononline.com or leave a comment on this post. Rate me on YouTube and follow me on Twitter at mangazanadu, all one word. Until next time, farewell from the Manga Dome.